Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Ant Man channel on this Wednesday, the 3rd of December 2014. I am Ant Man. Um, I have an article here in front of me from the most annoying website you can ever go to because, I mean, if you want to see a website that over advertises and, like, makes, I mean, it's just ridiculous, go to the Christian Post. ChristianPost.com. This Somebody write this person and tell them to remake this website because this website really is annoying to visit. Um, it re. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying because like man it it just there's it's just bombarded by advertisements and not only that it's like it refreshes itself and it's just I don't know anyways God bless you guys for coming this article that I have in front of me today here is called Greg Laurie no question these are the end times America's role America's role as superpower will diminish as new world order forms this is Greg Laurie saying this I mean. He, I mean, Greg Laurie, by no stretch of the imagination, is a you know emergent or a chari those charismatic that water down the word or anything. He actually preaches the word very, very boldly and very accurately. But um, he's he's very uh, he he restrains himself from from going there. You know what I mean? Um, I I appreciate that kind of honesty though. Like uh, it kind of reminds me of like a Kent Hovind. I don't know why because, like. You'll go to him to learn about science or something, but he'll tell you that the reason why people push evolution is because there's an agenda behind it. Now, this as well, like, I mean, this, when you see what go, what's going on in the culture and stuff, I mean, this is just an a, a amazing signs of the end times going on. And it is because, I mean, we could open up the Bible right now and see that in, in uh, that the way that uh, the Apostle Peter, St. Peter, uh, the way that he describes the way that people will be, their character is going to be in the end times, is exactly how what you see in people these days. And I don't mean to be so critical and hard on people, but you have to say this kind of stuff. And it, it, I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing it in any other way but out of love as well. Because um, if you don't say, if you don't call out this evil and this darkness out for what it is, then it'll, it'll just continue and, and, and it'll continue to hurt and, and lead others astray. Um, let's see here then. Let me get into this already. Uh, this article is written by Stephanie Samuel. He's a, she's a, uh, he, she's a Christian report, uh, she's a Christian post reporter. So, Greg Laurie is a senior pastor of Harvest Christian Fellowship in Riverside, California and Harvest Orange County in Irving, California. He shares the gospel with a, sol uh, a sold out crowd of 19,000 for Harvest America at the American Airlines Center. Um, and Victory Park in Dallas, Texas, October 5th, 2014. Harvest Ministries Pastor Greg Laurie and, uh, said Sunday his study of Bible prophecy and current events shows America will fade as the world's foremost superpower in the last days, either because it will join with the Antichrist or it will be diminished by the rapture. Um, yeah, you know, when it comes down to prophecies and stuff, like when it comes down to like what, what God says and whatnot, um, I have more than enough assurance to believe that whatever happens to America, us Christians are going to be taken care of by God. And there are very, there are a lot of instances in the Bible that actually support that, uh, you know, why I would believe that. So let me get in, back into this. Um, in a November 30th sermon uh, entitled Israel, Iran, ISIS, and Bible Prophecy, Laurie preached, preached that Christians are now living in the last days because of the fulfillment of various end times prophecies laid out in the Bible book of Revelations. Uh, current events such as um, uh, such as Israel establish, uh, establishing itself as a nation, Russia aligning with Iran and the rise of Islamic extremism, he said, are setting the stage for a predicted conflict in which the world's forces turns against Israel. Uh, the rise of anti-Semitism is no joke. Um, when people get into conspiracy theories and stuff, I, I mean, I really, ah, uh, if I, man, I mean, every time it comes down to these conspiracy theories, man, everybody is like becoming a Jew hater. So people believe that the Jews are behind everything. Let me tell you something that it's much more complicated than that. Zion, Zionists actually pose as Jewish people and they're scumbags. So they, they try to make you hate Jews, the real Jews, by their conduct when they're not real Jews. Zionists are not real Jews, but the way that they act and behave is 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 a program for you to 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 aim your to to aim your you know like what you see them doing, your anger toward the, the real Jews. 
And this is a tactic. Hitler used that against Christians in, in Nazi Germany. He said he was a Christian, and that's why, you know, that's why he did all that he did. And, um, and no matter, you know what I mean? It's just, a, it's, it's propaganda. It's a propaganda uh, tool. So, one force that we'll, we'll be missing during the conflict, said Lori, um, Lori says, is the United States of America, as the forces of Antichrist emerge, I believe that America will fade from the scene. Putting the United States in the context of Scripture, he explained, we are not found in the end time scenario. Lori believes that America's absence in the global map described in the revelations can be explained by one of two scenarios. No one can say with certainty, but it would appear that we're going to fade as a world power because maybe we fall in line as one of the confederate, uh, one of the confederated nations under the Antichrist. But the version I prefer the most is we would have the rapture and so many Americans would be taken to heaven that that would be the explanation for our demise as a nation. Unfortunately for a lot of you guys that grew up watching the Left Behind series and all that, uh, I have to I have to point out that I really don't see that in the scriptures. I, I see that we do get put through a lot of tribulation and hardship and adversity and we will be persecuted. I think that it is a part of the emergent, you know, this little wimpy side of Christ. It's not really Christianity. There are people who pose that to be Christians who water down the word or change it completely so that nobody, you know, panics or nobody really understands the Bible correctly so that they don't. You know, it, it's really, what it is, it's just cowardliness. Because even though the Bible is hard, it is hard. It, it's hard for us to to really, like, just be like, you know, without without the grace and mercy and, you know, the strength that Christ gives us, it's really hard to be able to, uh, to, be able to cope with the truth because it is very hard. But um, that that is a part of the whole, the whole end times is that those that persevere, those that hold on, those that are uh, going to go through all of this and still look to the prize that's set before them, that's what really what the, what the Bible says is that those that endure will in, will receive the crown of life or the will be able to eat from the tree of life, and um, and and I don't know, man. Honestly, there are there's eschatology. I think that everybody should hold on to their eschatology very loosely because it is a mystery. It's not like I know for sure that there isn't a pre-trib rapture. But from what I understand, I don't see that in the Bible. I see that we are going to get put through a lot of grief, man. And that's just how it is. And I don't care how many people want to, you know, pat you on the back and rub you, rub your shoulders and tell you it's all going to be okay. But in reality, it doesn't look like that. But there is a hope at the end of the tunnel, see, because even in Rome, when Christians were being persecuted, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. That ended up having the Christian church grow. That ended up, um, you know, just influencing more people to give their lives for Christ. The rapture is an event during which premillennialist Christians believe that Jesus' followers, dead and alive, will be caught up from the earth to be united with Christ according to 1 Thessalonians 4.17. Pre-millen premillennialists also believe that Jesus will return to the earth to establish a time of peace called uh, the millennial. Laurie said Christ's second coming is very, very close. Oh yeah, I feel it as well. The last day's events can be likened, as I've said before, to a lot of dominoes stacked together. So it's like a lot of dominoes closely stacked together. Okay, why would you say that twice? There's a chain of events that are going to unfold in rapid succession, beginning with the emergence of the Antichrist and ending with the Battle of Armageddon at the return of Jesus Christ. And once that domino, that first domino falls, or uh, these, um, excuse me, these things are going to happen like this, Lori said, snapping his fingers. Premillennialists believe Jesus' second coming will be ushered in by a period of religious persecution called the Great Tribulation. The California pastor quoted Bible passages and former Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel to show that the Great Tribulation is at hand. Jesus coming back should be a comfort to us and not a, uh, you know what I mean? Not not something that hinders our, from us to uh to be strengthened, not something that's going to discourage us, but something that will encourage us, I think. It should be. Um, Secretary, uh, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel was quoted recently stating that the world is experiencing historic defining times that will result in a new world order while questioning America's role in the emerging world. Elaborating further, Hegel said that this is a time of global transformation. We are essentially seeing a new world order evolving and being built. I don't think we've seen such a time since right after World War II. He summed, I don't know what 
Secretary, Defense Secretary Hagel meant by that, but I believe a new world order is coming. As this order forms, Lori predicted that Russia, Sudan, and Iran will come together to take on Israel. Referring to Old Testament prophecies explained in Ezekiel 39, God says to Magog in verse 2, I'll turn you and drive you toward the mountains of Israel, bringing you from the distant north. Well, it, if you look to the north of Israel, you find the large nation known as Russia. Is this describing Russia? I think it very well may be. I don't think anyone can say with absolute certainty it's Russia, but I think you can make a very good case for it being Russia. But what I find interesting is the allies that march with Magog. There is Ethiopia, what we call modern day Sudan, Libya, and be, uh, Libya would be Libya. And then there's Iran because Persia is mentioned and Persia is modern day Iran. Um, pretty much an old school Babylon. But you guys need to know something. Um, Gog and Magog may be very misinterpreted these days. Um, Gog, I think uh, Gog was the name of the guy who was the ruler of a place called Magog. A lot of people for some reason believe this was in Russia, but I think it was in Turkey. I think a lot of the, a, a lot of the end times Bible prophecy comes from uh, something that is going on from Turkey. Turkey seems to play in the background very ominously like they aren't doing anything, right? But I think Turkey has a lot to do with what's going on these days, especially with ISIS, especially with all of the persecution of Christians. Um, people are starting to go from being atheist to straight up religious. And I'm not talking about the good type of religion. I'm talking about, and religion, I don't even, that's like an oxymoron actually to say the good kind of religion. There isn't any good religion. Religion's garbage and it is a pollution on this earth. But People that the um, Erdogan, I don't know how to say that guy's name, man, but that guy, whoever he is, he's like a prime minister of Turkey. That guy, that guy for sure, man, he's, he's, he's moving from like atheism to extremism uh, in a religious sense. So just, just look out for that, you know, go to Discovery Ministries. Uh, that's a great channel to learn about a lot of this end time prophecy stuff. Um, although U.S. President Barack Obama reopened talks last year with Iran for the first time since 1979, Lori believes Iran is a formidable enemy. Yeah, they're trying to get nuclear <laughs> bombs ready for us that still wants to destroy Israel despite its new leader. He also noted Iran and Russia are allies and have an agreement to sell and purchase arms from one another. Lori also analyzed the emergence of Islamic terrorist group ISIS as a sign of the times. Originally, they were written off as junior varsity, and we were told these guys are not a formidable threat. In fact, former Secretary of Defense Hegel said they were a formidable threat, but some didn't believe they were, and then they emerged as, as this terrorist army. We've never faced a terrorist group like this before. What, how, what, what this really is, is it's Al-Qaeda 2.0, because the, our US, the U.S. government helped create these terrorists. That is a known fact. Nobody denies that. Nobody denies that. We helped arm and fund ISIS. And they're big as they are because we helped fund them. And it's a... That right there in and of itself is a real shame on our side. And on how we pick our leaders in this country. Um, so let's get back into this. Um, end time prophecies are a controversial topic both inside and outside Christian circles. Yeah, you don't get any respect for it because you got to be like, oh, every you got to be into like potlucks and like movie nights and playing Xbox at church. You can't be talking about prophecy or speaking in time. You can't be, you can't actually be a real Christian at church these days. No, no, that's, don't condemn people, Matt. You're being, you're being condemning. Pastors will tell you that. It's really sad. Um, let's see. Originally they were written off. Let's see. What, what was that? Was that where I was? So Lori also analyzed the emergence of Islamic terrorist group ISIS as a sign of the times. Originally, they were written off. Oh, yeah, I just read that. End time prophecies. I just read that. Um, so, yeah, such discussions are regarded with skepticism outside the church after the, um, the failed predictions of American preachers such as Harold Camping and Edgar Wisenet inside of the church. Christians are divided over the interpretations of Peter's visions and often break into three different camps, pre-millennial, uh, pre post-millennial, and amillennial. Laurie understands his message is controversial, but said, I will not avoid a political issue because it's controversial. As far as I'm concerned, I know, I want to know what the Bible says, and that's where I'm going to stand and, and land every time. 
Well, you know, when, when, when you see people, especially like me, talking about maybe Ferguson or anything, you're going you're gonna to probably tend to say, because of the culture that you're used to growing up and being domesticated to, sorry, but that's really what it is, you're going to think of, who are you to, to talk about this issue? I'm a saint. I know the divine secrets of the universe, my friend. I'm not going to hold back on what I know. And plus, I'm going to be accountable to God if I don't tell you all of this that I know. And plus, if... You know what I mean? So I don't really care about your your accusations and, and whatever because I know they're erroneous and I know that they're fallible because it, it's really my, uh, it's my moral obligation to judge. It's my moral obligation to send a message out there of truth. And if you really want to give someone a gift uh, this season, give them the gift of truth. <laughs> There's no greater gift in the world than truth, man. Give them the, give them the gospel. Um, that's a free gift. You know what I mean? We're all running around spending money that we don't have to try to give to people that we love when we have something for free that's greater of value than anything we can find at a Walmart or at a Best Buy. And, um, you know, Christians, don't be, don't be so quick to say you're not all about money if that's what you're doing. Spending beyond your means to put Christmas presents under the tree, your pagan tree. Sorry, that's what it is. But, what you should be doing is giving the people the free gift of everlasting life. And if they want to reject it, then hey, hey man, uh, I honestly don't have any pity on people that don't see that the cross is one of the most, it's the most beautiful story you can ever hear in your life. Um, really, it is. Um, so let me get back into this. If anything, the Harvest Ministries leaders, uh, his, the leader hopes he's such discussions, it will spur Christians under the sound of his voice to spread the gospel and hasten the rapture. Uh, it would appear to me that God is waiting for that last person to believe that then rapture of the church happens and then it would seem to me looking at the big picture prophetically that these events that we're talking about today will start to fall into place, he described in the Sunday sermon. You know what I think is really fascinating today as a Christian is that we, um, we see Bible prophecy playing out every single day. We do. We do. We literally have uh, scripture being more scripture being revealed to us almost every single day. And I mean, that should not be uh, disregarded. If you call yourself a Christian, this, these kind of things should be fascinating to you. You should be on it like this. I mean, look at the vigilant Christian. That guy is a, that guy is really on it. That guy is like, I admire that guy because he really knows what he's talking about. And not only that, but he actually has the boldness to tell you what he believes and and he doesn't, he doesn't have, you know what I love about the Bible is that when it describes God, Peter says that I, I, I perceive that God is not a respecter of persons. And, and the, even the Pharisees knew that God was a person of integrity and that he doesn't try to rub your ego just to, to you know what I mean? Just to get you to accept him or get, be persuaded by what he says. We should be bold enough to speak the truth without, without really worrying about the consequences of it. We should just have hope and, and faith in that God is going to work in that person. For example, look at what happened to Stephen. Stephen was killed for what he did. He preached the gospel and he got murdered. But Stephen didn't get to see the fruit of what he really did. Because what he really did is he, you know, look at what happened to Paul. Paul was the one that, you, you know, he was the one that said, go ahead, stone him. But look at what God did for Paul. Sometimes, man, I think that we don't really understand how big of an impact we're making when we're laying ourselves down for the for the cross, for the gospel. So I just encourage you guys to just, you know, in, in this holiday season, pray for strength and endurance and wisdom. And uh, God is really, he's generous to give wisdom to all who seek it and that ask him for it. And you have to believe that God is a rewarder of those who seek him diligently. You can't just, you know. Have faith. You, you got to have faith. You can't just doubt God and say, well, God, if you give me wisdom, then I'll believe in you. No, you go, God, please. I, I need you right now. I need wisdom right now. Um, you know what I mean? And don't just like, don't. and then after you pray, don't just be like, well, I'm waiting. No, open your Bible and look for wisdom because that's where the treasures of everlasting life are hidden in Christ Jesus. So thank you guys for watching my video today. And I hope that you guys have a blessed day. Um, get ready for the holidays, I guess. Uh, you know, get ready to preach the gospel, make the holiday, make this this, this season about, you know, uh, finding a way to create an opportunity to preach the gospel. So God bless you. Have a good day.